today I've got a comparison extravaganza between the GoPro Hero 11 Black and the iPhone 14 Pro. The reason of course being that in Apple's keynote this year, they said that the iPhone 14 Pro has a new action camera mode. This is action mode. It uses the full sensor with iPhone 14 Pro now includes new action mode. And of course, I'm going to go through a whole bunch of different scenarios, action and non-action alike, daylight as well as nighttime. You know when you think to yourself, maybe something's a bad idea? <laughs> no, me neither. <laughs> So with that, let's get rolling. Right now, I've got the action mode enabled, just walking along right here. You can see which microphone I'm using down at the bottom there, which audio source is coming from. We're gonna just going a light jog right here and get moving up. But don't worry, we got some full on sprints in just a minute here. One thing to note is that when you do turn on the action mode on the iPhone 14 Pro, it is limited to 2.8K. So it is limited there, a bit more resolution compared to the 5.3K of the GoPro. You can see that happen there when I hit that little action button from 4K down to 2.8K. Now, since I don't have a runner to chase after, I'm going to do the next best thing and chase after unsuspecting cyclists at full tilt down the street. Now, keep in mind, I'm moving pretty quick at this point. I'm actually basically like full on sprinting. Uh, and these two look pretty darn good. Again, comparing an action mode, here's a full screen view of the Hero 11 Black from the GoPro. And then here is the iPhone 14 Pro in action mode at full screen. It kind of works, mostly. Now just to provide context, on the left hand side I've got the iPhone 13 Pro in non-action mode, and the right side the action mode of the 14 Pro. Here is the 13 Pro first off, just full screen so you can see all that wobble, and then boom into the iPhone Pro in action mode. And just look how stable that is, so much more stable. Oh, and note that the selfie mode on the iPhone does not have the action option, so just keep that in mind. Nonetheless, I just simply turn the cameras around so you can see them here. Again, this is on the main lens, and this is just the wide mode on the GoPro. It does go wider into both super view and hyper view, and I'll show that a little bit later on. But you can see these are pretty darn good. I'm actually really impressed with the, the iPhone 14. Crops a little bit more, but it's not too shabby. Oh, holy crap. And then here's a quick comparison again with the iPhone 13 Pro on the left-hand side in non-action mode compared to action mode on the 14. And by the way, don't forget, if you want to rewind anything, you can just double tap the left-hand side of the screen on the mobile phone or tablet app, or press the J key on a keyboard on a computer to jump oh, back crap. 10 seconds. Now, when you do go ahead and press that action mode on the iPhone 14 Pro, you'll see it crops in quite a bit. Watch this tree in particular when I tap that and see how much more it crops into it. Note that the action mode is available in other lenses. You can see right here, I'm comparing linear on the GoPro Hero 11 Black to the main lens on the iPhone 14 Pro. But you'll notice the image is not quite as steady. A little bit of wobble coming from the iPhone 14 once you get in this main lens here. In unrelated news, remember at the beginning I put a GoPro down and record yeah. myself running? And yeah. Right there, so. That's dropped off somewhere. It's a, it's a mobile camera. So what do you do with it now? Turn it off. And then do what with it? Uh, yeah. Just doing some silly tests. It's all good. Oh, good. Sorry, I don't know what it was. No, no, it's all good. I appreciate it. Thanks. <laughs> Now, before we move on to the next one, if you are enjoying this video, just give it a like at the bottom there. It really does help out this video and the channel quite a bit. Okay, off into the water we go. Now, keep in mind, the iPhone is water resistant up to a certain point anyways. Uh, just keep in mind that you can't use a charging port for a few hours after though, so just keep that in mind. Both of these are looking pretty good. The quality of the water isn't super amazing on this particular day. Also, it's a bit earlier in the morning, so you see that the GoPro is a little bit darker than the iPhone, meaning that the iPhone is doing a better job of that lower light than the GoPro is. But both of them are still really quite nice. Now, I did not just limit myself to the pool, off to the beach I went. Uh, in this case, I went out into the ocean and played around for a little while. Uh, I had no problems with the phone there. I think the iPhone is doing a little bit better job when I'm above water, but once I go underwater, I actually like the colors a little bit better on the GoPro Hero 11 Black. Uh, it seems just a little bit like greenish to me on the iPhone, uh, but again, most of these are pretty good. Keep in mind, just like with the pool, that you're not going to have access to the charging port immediately afterwards. And also, make sure you rinse off your iPhone in fresh water. Uh, that way, nothing corrodes. Of course, it is now time to do a proper slow motion 240 frame per second test. And the only way to do that is some cannibal action. Here it is, the first go around on this cannibal. I was not super happy with my cannibal performance this time around. I mean, the cameras did just fine. They both look great. So I obviously had to do it again. In this one, I get a proper kerplunk out of the middle. That wave action coming right back up again. All those droplets coming down. I mean, this just looks so nice. The lighting, the colors, everything is spot on here. Especially right now, all those droplets hitting back on the surface of the water. Oh, I can watch this over and over again. And so could you if you just press the rewind button. So here we are night side by the pool and you can see the picture quality on the iPhone is just amazing. 
This is all handheld right now. Uh, versus the GoPro is certainly way, way darker, but is more stable. Uh, now, of course, I think I'll probably choose the iPhone image right now if I was me, but uh, as I'm walking along and as I go out of the light here, it's going to lose, uh, obviously, the light, but I uh, should be now in the shadows. At least on the GoPro, it looks like I'm fairly in the shadows. This particular next light is turned off. I'm going to just do a quick trot until I get to the next light here to get some more illumination. There we go. Uh, and you can see now, here I am back in that light again. No, I'm not gonna lie. There's no like good way of doing this where the iPhone gets kind of like the perfect placement mount wise, uh, but that's sort of the reality of it. These cameras are built for mounting and this thing isn't really built for mounting. I hope we all find some mounts down the road that'll be better than this, but uh, this is gonna have to do, donkey. Okay, I did a lot of test runs of this, uh, trying different configurations for the mounts and whatnot. And this is one of the best dual mount ones that I have. And I'm actually pretty happy with this. Uh, I think, you know, the i14 Pro, uh, you know, certainly is a bit cropped more and I can go way wider on the GoPro. Again, both a super view or hyper view if I wanted to, but I wanna to try to keep them equal here. Uh, but again, this looks pretty good for the iPhone 14 Pro. But now let's go ahead and switch it over to just the iPhone 14 Pro mounted by itself so the other mounts weren't messing up. A little bit better angle, a little bit better perspective here. No comparison, of course, but I mean, come on, this is this is solid. And I think over time, you find even better mounts for this to make it much more easier and much more better uh, from mounting experience. Obviously, this isn't a super exciting test. Uh, the cameras aren't like in a great spot per se, but I think it shows how it all works reasonably well at this point. Just cook them along. I'm not in sport mode. There's honestly no reason to. The entire car is basically a gimbal into itself. If I was off-roading, that might be different, but in this case, it's a pretty smooth road. Now, here is the Hyperview setting on the GoPro Hero 14 Black. Uh, you can see it's a much wider setting. You can see much more of this vehicle and really is better suited for this type of thing. And of course, oh, lightning, very cool. Uh, so it's gonna make the drone a bit difficult to fly. You know when you think to yourself, maybe something's a bad idea? <laughs> no, me neither. Okay, I can't quite get it perfectly straight, but it'll work. It's just too heavy. I'm gonna make a modification. Okay, it's not perfect. It's a little bit tilty, but we're gonna make this work. Yeah, baby, I got a It's not working very well. It's not that it's too heavy, it's that it's all offset. I'd have to rethink the mount a little bit. Maybe something for a different day. Okay, here's a test of the microphone to get wind reduction. Uh, both cameras are obviously facing me right now as I talk. I'm switching the audio at the bottom right there. I'm gonna flip the cameras around now and keep on talking. So we'll see if we can catch up the cycle stuff there as I continue to talk. So you can listen to what the audio quality sounds like and how the uh, wind reduction handles. Here's a quick test as I'm running through the airport. Obviously late as always for a flight. But you know what? Just with light stuff like this, no real issues. You can use either one without any problems. Now just a quick look at a couple photos. Here's the i14 Pro in the wide lens configuration. Then we'll switch over to the GoPro in that same wide lens. I've left all the photos in the exact original formats, totally unedited. Here's the 1X of the normal lens on the iPhone. And a look at linear mode, which is kind of the equivalent of that on the GoPro Hero 11 Black. And then we'll go into the 3X telephoto lens on the iPhone. And there is no equivalent of that on the GoPro, so I just digitally cropped it to 300% to see the same sort of effect. Of course, when you do this, you're just digitally zooming in on the GoPro. So in this case, you're really just gonna see more pixelation. Of course, there are many more things to consider when you're looking at these side by side. Everything from how you mount the cameras to battery life to how you get the images off the camera and transmit them elsewhere. And ultimately, it sometimes just comes down to the right camera for the job. If I'm doing mountain biking, it's probably gonna be a GoPro. But if I'm just doing more general life stuff, it's probably gonna be my phone because it's always in my pocket. Of course, let me know down in the comments there what you thought about the footage and how they perform in different scenarios. I'm certainly interested to hear that. If you found this video interesting or useful, go ahead and like that like button or subscribe for plenty more sports technology goodness. With that, have a good one.